Niagara Regional Chair Jim Bradley joins us this morning for an update on all things Niagara. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Great to be with you. Uh, first up, let's start with uh, your job. Uh, Niagara's voters won't have a say in selecting the region's chair on October 24th. Uh, give a, there's a background here. It was swirling around in 2018 and there was a motion in 2020. But uh, what's uh, happening now? It's, is it dead for the foreseeable future? Council has, has determined that we should stay the way we have been, where the council chooses the uh, individual who will be the chair for the next four years. So it is similar to what has happened in the past. There's a hybrid out there. Some municipalities have the direct election. Others have the uh, council choose them. And our council has, has decided to stay with the system we have at the present time. Okay. Uh, go trains, um, a GO train station in Beamsville, Metrolinx put out a business case. Uh, so uh, is this going to happen? It's going to happen down the line, and we're certainly looking forward to it. It was very encouraging to hear that the business case was positive and that a GO station will be located in Beamsville, uh, what we call it, the town of Lincoln, of course, but what folks still call Beamsville. And, uh, uh, we'd have one in Grimsby, and there'd be one, of course, in St. Catharines and Niagara Falls. So this in addition, we expect there will be a number of people who are going to use it for tourism purposes and uh, for commuting purposes. So it was good news. I was out there the other day and uh, observing the site and discussing it with local officials. So what needs to happen next? Well, the province will make its determination on uh, when we should proceed with it. Uh, uh, so it'll be a while yet. We still have to have the commuter service come down here. Uh, we have some service at the present time that we're delighted with on the weekends, tourism service. Uh, we've had that uh, one train a day for a while. Of course, COVID-19 has an impact on that. But when we get commuter service, and we're, we're enthusiastic about that, uh, we're optimistic that we'll have commuter service in uh, the foreseeable future. At that time, there'll have to be a station uh, uh, erected uh, right there in Beamsville. Yeah, so uh, once the um, provincial green light comes in, I guess there's a number of properties to be bought up? Uh, that's what has to happen, yes. Yeah, uh, still with transit. Uh, so the single transit commission with Niagara, of course, uh, you had the um, triple majority that was needed. So uh, and the timeline for that, when will the uh, service actually transition to uh, the single service? Uh, and we'll the new schedules? We'll transition in 2023. In fact, we discussed it at last night's council meeting. Uh, we're there determining uh, the makeup of uh, the new commission, which is interim on in this uh, particular basis. And uh, all the wheels are going in that direction. The local entities are integrating themselves with the one big entity in Niagara. Uh, again, uh, this has been very smooth. Uh, and uh, uh, there's been a lot of enthusiasm for it, I must say. Uh, there, oh, absolutely. Uh, there's um, emergency information. There is um, a two-year pilot to provide information on road closures and uh, things like that. Yeah, it's 511 uh, that people can dial for that. You know, it can be frustrating for people when they don't know there's construction taking place or a, a road closure taking place. If they can access that information, including emergency information on 511, uh, that's going to be very good. We're not the first municipality uh, in Canada to have it or in Ontario. About half of them have it now. We think mm -hmm. it's a good idea. And certainly motorists out there will welcome it very, very much. Yeah, so uh, the pilot project, uh, is it is it uh, now or when does it kick in? Yes, it's on at the present time. It's on right now. End, okay. End of the fourth quarter, we'll be evaluating it to determine whether we should make it uh, full time. But it sounds like a good idea just off the top of our heads that uh, people would be able to oh. have that information available to them when they're driving in Niagara. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very important tool. Before we go, uh, Canada Summer Games, is the region ready? We're ready. Uh, ready. We just toured the uh, main facility yesterday on Brock University's campus. It's an immaculate facility. It's going to uh, see a lot of action there. But right around the whole Niagara region, there's going to be action. Uh, the committee itself uh, is, is working very hard. We're gathering volunteers for it. We expect about 5,000 athletes and families and friends and others. This is going to put uh, Niagara on the Canadian map uh, for two full weeks in uh, August of this year. So there's a lot of excitement about it now. And Doug Hamilton and his team have, uh, have certainly made uh, all of the arrangements needed. And uh, we're looking forward to welcoming everybody. 
Fantastic. All we need now is summer and spring to actually <laughs> start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Niagara Regional Chair Jim Bradley, have a great weekend and thanks for joining us.